turns out that the presence of other ions in solution can impact solubilities. All right, and this, uh, this phenomenon is known as the common ion effect. And that's why it's written right there. We're going to talk about it. It's called the common ion effect. All right. But it turns out we already know this. All right. The common ion effect is nothing more than a, I guess, a specific application of Le Chatelier's principle. All right. Which we already know what Le Chatelier's principle is. Okay, we've got our equilibrium system. And you mess with the concentrations, right? The equilibrium is going to shift one way or the other. All right. And so that's what this is. The, the equilibrium concentrations a.k.a. the molar solubilities, can be impacted if there's other ion presence. Okay? So let's take a look at a couple examples to uh, see what I mean. So let's draw a picture. All right? Draw a picture of a beaker. All right? Give you time to draw your picture. Of You're not drawing your beaker. Draw, draw your beaker. 250. How come your beaker would never have um, the measurement? <laughs> no, not the measurement. I'm thinking of silly. Okay, so let's think about, let's think about, you know, we just did, we talked about silver chloride initially. So let's throw some, let's do some silver chloride. So we have silver chloride. We throw it in. Again, most of it's going to be solid on the bottom with a little bit of silver chloride ions associated. <clears throat> All right, the question about the common ion effect would be what would happen to the solubility of silver chloride if some sodium chloride was added. So to that beaker, to that solution, we're going to add some sodium chloride. Sodium chloride has a much, much, much higher solubility, so we'll just assume all of them are just ions floating around. All right, so we need to think about how sodium chloride is going to impact the silver chloride. So the first thing we need to do is just come up with our equilibrium system. All right, so silver chloride is our equilibrium system. That's what we're worried about. So silver chloride is an equilibrium with silver and chloride. So that's our equilibrium system, and we added some sodium chloride to that. How is that sodium chloride going to impact this equilibrium? And again, all this is an application of Le Chatelier's principle, which how we disturb equilibrium. So what's going to be affected? The chloride. The, chlor the chloride concentration, right? We're adding, we're adding sodium chloride, right? What's going to happen to the concentration of chloride after we add some sodium chloride? It's going to go up. So yeah, the chloride that we added right here is going to cause the concentration of chloride to go up. How is that going to shift this equilibrium? To the left? Good check. To the left, yes. More chloride is there, so more chloride is going to bump into silver, making more silver chloride solid. <coughs> All right, so we're shifting equilibrium. Yes, so uh, chloride concentration went up.
which shifted the equilibrium to the left. Okay. So what does that do to the solubility? That's really what we want to know. Do we think the solubility is decreased by that shift or increased? So think about this. So we're making more solid. So there's less silver in solution. There's more silver chloride sitting at the bottom of the beaker. So is the solubility increased or decreased? Decrease. If there's, less, if there's more solid sitting down at the bottom of the beaker, the solubility's gone down. Okay? So the solubility is decreased. Solid. Yep, the solids has it. All right, so again, all it is is an application of Le Chatelier's principle. And the name comes from the fact that, of course, the common ion is chloride. Chloride is present in both compounds. It's common among both compounds. And it impacts the equilibrium. <coughs> all right, so uh, sometimes uh, the uh, common ion isn't as easy to spot. Like, you're looking at these two compounds, silver chloride, sodium chloride. Of course, chloride is going to be the common ion effect. But sometimes it's a little bit... Uh, now, now I'm all in my head. I'm not going to be able to draw a beaker. <laughs> all right, so let's, uh, let's stick with our silver chloride. So we throw in some silver chloride into our beaker on Bodie McBoatface. That's why it's wavy. Most of it sit down at the bottom as the solid. And we've got some silver ions and chloride ions. kind of transportation is left? I mean, we got planes, trains, cars, yeah. So maybe like Tesla will like have a contest to like name its next car. Car, you make car face? They, um, they were trying to do some inside joke with the uh, Model S, the Model 3, the Model X. Sex. Nah. <laughs> That's, that's too risque for this lecture. <laughs> Kari McCarface would be much, much better, much more appropriate. That is kind of funny. All right, so we got silver chloride still in our equilibrium. Now, the question here would be hmm. Yeah, let's separate these. What would happen? to the solubility of silver chloride if sodium hydroxide was added. Now to make the now, to make the. Sorry. No, sorry, what's up? I was going to say the sodium would also go with the chloride as long as the salt. Not, not that one. You're on the right track, but it's not sodium that does it. Because sodium chloride is very soluble. So sodium chloride wouldn't crystallize. Yep, again, you're on the right track, but it's not going to be the chloride. Okay? We do have to know a little bit more about the solubilities. So the one thing, I'd give you one other piece of information for these problems, okay? Or for this problem, rather. 
what would happen to the uh, solubility of silver chloride if sodium hydroxide was added? Oh, by the way, <laughs> OBT dubs, silver hydroxide is insoluble. Not the chloride. Let's just let's think about what our uh, equilibrium system is again. So we got silver chloride in equilibrium with silver plus chloride. And we added some sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is group one metal or group one hydroxide, so we know it's very soluble. So again, no, no solid would form from the sodium hydroxide. But that second sentence, oh, by the way, silver hydroxide is insoluble. What's that mean the hydroxide is going to do? It's going to react with the silver and form a solid compound. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, not CL. So again, yeah, but you're on the right track. Yeah. Instead of CL, yes. Okay, that's what you meant. Sorry. No, yeah, then you're absolutely right. So yeah, the silver, any silver ions that are uh, present, the small amount that dissolved, would react with the hydroxide and precipitate, form silver hydroxide. Now that might set up equilibrium as well, but that's not important to this one since we're only interested in the silver chloride. If silver is reacting with hydroxide to form silver hydroxide, what's happening to the concentration of silver? It's going to decrease. And it's also going to decrease in our equilibrium system. It's decreasing in the whole solution. So if silver ion concentrations decrease, which way is the equilibrium shifting? to the right. Yep, so silver concentration goes down. Equilibrium shifts right. So what's going to, so from our silver chloride, what's going on? We're going to make more silver, more chloride ions. So would we say our solubility is increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. Yeah, we're making more ions. Let some of our solid crystals at the bottom of the beaker are dissociating and making more product ions. So yeah, we would say the solubility is increasing there. <laughs>